a little adventure on our drive to Kansas City today. We were driving down the highway and I, I was wanting to visit this town of Abilene, Kansas, but it was just a little too far away from our campground for a day trip. So I said, well, we'll skip it. It was supposed to be just a cute little town. Well, on the way, on the highway, we saw some billboards that the Dwight Eisenhower Presidential Library is here in Abilene. So Jason started saying, you know, just because we're pulling our RV shouldn't mean that we can't stop over to places when we're on long drives. I said, not today, but like yeah. sometime. We could but like sometime pride, yeah. we should do that. And I said, well, we're still 20 miles from Abilene. Why don't you see on the map, could we easily get off the highway with our fifth wheel and go to the presidential library and then get back on? So he did a little research. It only took easy. a few minutes. Super easy. There's and an I RV, was driving. an RV parking strip right here in the parking lot. <laughs> They've got a special parking area for campers and uh, fifth wheels and RVs. And I was driving, so I pulled right in here, and I even backed up the RV into this parking spot with Jason's help, which is the first time I've ever backed up the RV. So that was a good practice for us. And now we can uh, we can go to the Presidential oh. Museum and see the town. That's so fun. I forgot you'd never really backed up before. No, no I you didn't. You, oh, that's why you were taking your time. That was a time. good practice. You did a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. So don't think just because you're pulling your huge fifth wheel that you can't, you can't just stop pop into over a presidential museum if you to feel things like that it. you see. You know, do a little research for a few minutes on the map and make sure that the, the entrance is clear and there's enough parking. Look at the satellite view um, and make sure that you can get in there safely and go for it. Yeah. Here's... There we go. That's a beautiful parking job. If you've been watching for a while, you also know that we're not opposed to taking the fifth wheel into a total wine parking lot. That has um, happened. So, in Texas. Was that? I think that was in Texas, yeah. There's plenty of room in Texas. So you can go wherever you want. <laughs> The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. What a fascinating museum. I, I knew bits and pieces of Eisenhower's history with the war and with the presidency, but to see it all together um, was really striking and amazing. They've just done a full refurbishment of the museum and they've done a wonderful job. It's a great interactive videos and war um, information and all about his childhood really worth the stop. This is his childhood home where he grew up with his uh, six brothers and parents and it's closed right now for refurbishment. They said there's a virtual tour, tour online but this is the original position or location of the home and then they've just built all this other presidential library stuff around it. Now because Dwight Eisenhower was such a decorated war hero this was actually started in the early 50s. It wasn't it, it, even before he became president, they were planning a, a monument to him here with his childhood home and his army service or, you know, military service. Um, and then it's just evolved over the years into this presidential library. Fascinating spot. And he and Mamie and their um, young son are also buried here. And so we're going to head over to the chapel to see their, their resting place. So 
So here are the grave sites of Dwight and Mamie Eisenhower. The Eisenhowers had two sons, but one of them died when he was only three years old of scarlet fever, and his uh, grave has been moved here with his parents. Their other son uh, was in the army and I think fought in Korea, and he's buried somewhere else, but they, they did have one adult son and then one child who died. I also never knew that Dwight Eisenhower was the founder of the United States Interstate Highway System. So that was really interesting to see that in 1956 he started the Interstate Project and which is you know what makes it so easy for us to RV all around the country and all these highways. That's yeah. very very interesting. He also did the, was the, the St. Lawrence Seaway so it was all about being able to more easily move commerce and prosperity. That was a big theme of his, it seems like. So mm -hmm. when we live in, in Rochester, New York, you know, a lot of the canal, new stuff that was done on the US and Canada side was from his, mm. you know, under him as well. So very interesting. Just arrived at our Boondockers Welcome in Raymore, Missouri, just on the Missouri side of Kansas City. And we're going to navigate this driveway. This guy was so helpful. He came down to the end of the road to meet us in his ATV and drove us up here and uh, showed us all the stuff. They even have a 50 amp plug on their garage. So this is a great stay. This is a lovely neighborhood and there's a little two mile loop walk back here that the host told us about. I'm going to go for a little pre-dinner walk. Oh, it's so nice to be in warm spring weather and to have the birds chirping and the, the trees that we're used to here in the east. We can see the landscape changing gradually as we go east and we are yeah. loving it. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, to have spring, which we kind of avoided on all other trips, but the trees are budding, mm -hmm. grass is greening up. You, like Lisa said, the birds are chirping. So it was hot and sunny in other places we've been, but there weren't birds. No. They, there wasn't life. I feel like I haven't heard birds all winter. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Canadian geese, I've heard a lot of those. Guys, we have been seriously neglecting our United States map here. We've skipped several states. I don't know why, but for the past few months, we just haven't been interested. I think it's because some of these stickers are starting to peel off. See this? And then we took Pennsylvania off because it was coming off. So what we decided to do was we just bought a whole new set of stickers. It was only like 25 bucks on Amazon. And we figured we'll just replace them. So now we're going to... Do some cleaning and replacing and updating of our map. Two years, 30 states. Very good. Sounds like something we'd do. Mm -hmm. All right, we're all caught up. This is a good looking map. time on this trip to explore the city of Kansas City too much. We just did a little drive around downtown, but it's Monday evening and the city is pretty dead. But we did want to make sure that we came to a barbecue place in Kansas City because that's one of the things it's famous for. So we chose Arthur Bryan's. As far as I can tell from my research online, this is one of the oldest and one of the original places that developed the Kansas City barbecue style and it smells delicious. So we're just going to get some dinner. <laughs> Red's a bit much. My goodness. That's a lot of food. We're gonna have good leftovers. <laughs> Which was the, the, the intention. <laughs> that is delicious. Everything is delicious. Now, Kansas City barbecue sauce is a little thicker um, than like Southern barbecue sauce. I remember when we were in North Carolina, their sauce was really thin. 
So Kansas City's nice and thick. And now a little sunset walk by the Missouri River, which we have never walked on, I don't think. Goes right through Kansas City. And tomorrow we're heading to St. Louis on the Mississippi River. We're gonna be back east of the Mississippi for the first time in a long time. So we are very excited about that. Thanks for joining us this week in Kansas City and we will see you in St. Louis next time. Bye guys, have a great week.